Hello guys, so this is some economic news. It's not all good. It, actually, none of it's really good. Um, we need to talk first about uh, the housing mortgage rates. They're, they're climbing. Last I heard it was 3.9 um, and uh, it's, it's, it was up half a percentage point from last month with December. Uh, the existing home sales for this month we're down, that's in, that's in January, it was down almost a full point. And what that is, is, is it, means, it means that people are beginning not to buy homes. The federal government or the Federal Reserve uses something called the k Shiller Index. And what that does, that measures single family homes. And again, that's even down. So housing, I'm really, really concerned about is interest rates rise. People are just not going to be able to afford to buy the housing, and, and housing property prices will drop also. In energy, we have the, the strategic petroleum preserve is still being depleted, or I should say, it's stopped being depleted. But the problem is now that the promise from the government is that they're going to begin to refill the reserve at. 68 to 72 dollars per barrel and the price of oil now is higher than that the reserves right now are at an all-time low since 1984 and that that's really really concerning um india and china are still buying russian oil despite the uh the the embargo that the united states and the rest of the west have passed had passed on, so that doesn't seem to be working that well. And Russia has begun to reduce its oil production, along with OPEC, meaning OPEC plus. That should again drive keep the prices of oil up, which is again not good, um, particularly when we have to fulfill our oil reserves. Supply chains, the elevated prices, delays continue um, throughout. The, throughout the market, and it, as I said, there's just general supply chain issues. Most of them, a lot of them are caused by weather, disease, like what happened with the chickens and the eggs, uh, plant diseases, things of like that, but we're still suffering supply chain issues, and a lot of it comes from the uh, Ukraine war. On the crypto end of things, um, some universities are beginning to look at blockchain, uh, which is the underpinnings of crypto as a, a real uh, entity. So you could be hearing a lot more about that. Um, so I, I believe there's a lot more to crypto than just Bitcoin. The International Monetary Fund says that crypto cannot be used for legal tender that's not surprising. You can't pay taxes with crypto. And uh, the latest on Sam, Bank Sam Bankman and FTX is that uh, there's been additional charges brought against them. Now, the biggest concern we have now is inflation. I'm going to go through just about five different months of inflation to give you an idea of what's going on. If you go back to November 2020, inflation was 1.17%. If you go... Uh, a year and a month later, to December 2021, it was 7.04%. June uh, 2022 was 9.6%. And in January, it was 6.4%. Now, the problem with this is that it's not, the recession, inflation is not receding. It's continuing to manifest itself. So the end result of that is going to be the Federal Reserve will probably continue to raise interest rates. And that brings a whole new set of issues. Employment uh, is still strong in the American economy. The stock market, uh, the last, I want to say, four weeks has been performing well until... The news came out on inflation and the CPI. The market sort of got ahead of itself. The Fed sort of got ahead of itself. And now what I believe is that we're going to be paying a dividend for that. But going forward, 
there's something called the yield curve inversion. To make it really quick, um, people, if people believe in you, they're willing to give you money for a long time. If they don't believe in you, they're going to give you money for a short time. So that's the Federal Reserve um, um, yield curve is two years versus ten years. More people are putting money into two years than ten years. That is scary because it tells us that people don't have confidence in buying long-term American bonds. It's been like that for a long time. That is probably one of the biggest indicators that recession is coming. And uh, the Fed, as I said, is continuing to rise the interest rates. The war in Ukraine and tensions in China um, involving Taiwan. We have a $1.7 trillion uh, spending bill. Uh, the debt ceiling is still out there that hasn't been handled. Student loan crisis is still there. We're still paying between 5 and $10 billion a month to pay for student loans for COVID when COVID is over. We've given Ukraine about over $100 billion. You know, I'm wondering when the accounting is coming for this. This is insane. Uh, as we said, this, this consumer price index is up. Um, the markets uh, are, are, are responding because, as we said, the Fed is going to increase rates. Our national debt here is $31 trillion. And to give you some indication how bad that's gotten, only 100 years, it's a long time, 100 years ago it was four. $400 billion, so the national debt has gotten completely out of hand. We Americans now are beginning to save more money. Um, credit card debt is at an all-time high. Family debt has increased over the last month. It's up 4%. Guys, this is not good news. We are in for some very, very hard times. So stay tuned. If you got something out of this, this uh, broadcast or this, this, this monologue, please give me a thumbs up. I need you to subscribe and I need you to follow and please share. Have a great day.